Hello, friend. Who do you pledge your allegiance to? Who influences you to make decisions? Who owns your heart? If you didn't just come up with a response like Jesus or God, take care. The battle for your allegiance is a real and legal battle, like a custody case at court. Or, more accurately, if you follow carnality in the path of Satan, it's more like the sale of a slave. And perversely, you're selling yourself. You might sell yourself for pleasure, slothfulness, greed, spite, jealousy, trifles in this world that are nowhere near your full value. Jesus is our rightful master, and he is generous. In fact, he bought you with his own more valuable life. When he passed from mortality, hanging on a crudely crafted cross like the mast of a ship, he opened a door for any and all of us to board the good ship Zion and live in spiritual security and holy power, never again to be persecuted and molested by Satan's vast hordes of cronies and creatures that come to steal, kill, and destroy. When Jesus declared it is finished, he was putting the devil in checkmate. The soul that leans on Jesus for repose shall certainly find him and shall be delivered. We cannot atone in earnest for our own sins. It is folly of the highest magnitude to believe any suffering done in hell will eventually end because we paid our way with our pain. Purging alone does not fill one with righteousness. We were created by a perfect and eternal God who creates children with infinite potential and worth. So time served in torment in the lake of fire can never end. The only way to escape the grasp of hell is to legally and rightfully belong elsewhere. There is only God and not God. There is only goodness perfected and the wholesale absence of every good and perfect thing and things that are tainted. Watch out for those. If you treasure anything in your heart more than you treasure the Lord, you don't belong to him. You belong with the demons who tempted you into showing reverence for sin. You must choose to embrace or reject God. Lukewarm is not saved. Just as in a court case, you must be able to present evidence to argue that you belong to God. What evidence, what evidence could you show to the adversary, to God, and to the many angelic witnesses of your life that you do not deserve to be harrowed up for it by your sins? Where is your evidence that you've asked the Lord to break the chains that tie you to hell? Where is the evidence of your broken and changed heart that has learned to eschew evil and delight in the supernal that has been purified? Why does the Lord allow us to even be influenced by evil? We may wish that he would destroy the demonic realm entirely for our sakes. But if he did that, he would lose all of his children because we are bound to those demons our own familiar spirits, by the lust they provoke in us to slake our thirst for sensuality and power. Like it or not, Christ would have been the only fruit gathered from this earthly harvest as he was the only complete success in mortality. The rest of us have made mistake after mistake as a child learning to walk fumbles because of his inexperience. We can all eventually mature into a full and enveloping appreciation for the atonement the Lord provided through the sacrifice payment of his own unfathomably valuable and beloved son, but so many people look away from the greatest bargain, the best value and opportunity ever presented, Jesus' token sacrifice, his very life for theirs. The only way to gain victory over hate, over hell, over folly, is love, divine love, glorious, perfect love. God demonstrated his love for each of us to bind the contract and guarantee safe passage to his presence far from hell. We must demonstrate our love for him and his ways. Do you take daily actions to prove or demonstrate your love for God and Jesus? How about in the past week? Did you talk to God? Have you recently thanked him profusely for your life and blessings? Do you have an open heart and serve and bless his children? Or do you waste your time playing games, watching movies, listening to worldly music, and ordering fast food, just hanging out, seeking pleasure for the sake of it? Are you living a focused life or a distracted life, a life of entertainment and ease, or even a life of focusing on your problems? 
that can be a distraction too. Are you all thrust and no vector, as they would say in the Air Force? Are you pushing towards glory and achievements in this world with no real vision for God and his magnificent kingdom? If you feel sure of your place in the Lord's kingdom, congratulations. May the peace of God rest upon your soul and may his love inspire your efforts to bless others. Share your valuable knowledge. Bless you. If you feel doubt regarding where you stand, speak to God about it now before you face him in the judgment seat. Today is the day you can alter your trajectory. Tomorrow it may be too late. Right now, as you listen to these words, you belong to someone. You belong with God or you belong to Lucifer. Hell is the default option. You can just follow your natural man and naturally fall into the roiling abyss at your passing, or you can proactively work to save your soul and the soul of others. You must shape yourself into a godlike being so you can withstand and revel in the glory of the Lord. One way to practice being godly is to focus on what you think about. Some people take energy from their environment and spiritually hoard it for themselves. Their thoughts are continually centered on themselves. The self-centered man has his focus turning inward. I refer to this kind of person as arrows in. Imagine a drawing of a stick man with a circle of arrows pointing at him. That's the most comfortable situation for an arrows in person. Everything around him is working to serve him. When all the arrows point in, he is content. The arrows in is man is a small man who cannibalizes himself and eventually shrinks. When you focus on yourself, you don't grow, you shrink. It's a sad way to live, but I see it often. Some people make energy within themselves. Contentment radiates from them and they focus on sharing that energy with others. It brings them joy to bring joy to others. This kind of person is arrows out. Imagine the stick man again, but this time the arrows surrounding him are pointed outward because his focus is on those around him. He wants to use his time and energy to make sure others have the contentment he has achieved, not for his sake, but for theirs. The arrows out man is a big man, an influential man, a noble soul. He grows. He grows beautifully in stature and brilliance. Where does the noble arrows out fellow get this inner glow that allows him to shine for others? I testify that he carries within him the light of Christ. The followers of Christ in scripture have been um, symbolized by a candle or leaven and bread or salt and food. A candle might not seem like much, but in a dark room it provides ample light. Leaven and bread is only one small ingredient, but it changes the entire loaf. And adding salt to food makes it palatable. <laughs> These small and humble things change the entire system. That's Jesus' kingdom. It's powerful even in the smallest of doses. Are you carrying the light of Christ within yourself? Can people see it in your eyes? Do you produce a positive energy that you feel impelled to share? Is there a spiritual glow in you? Do you want to praise the Lord with your words, with songs, with actions, with the willingness to forgive everyone who's hurt you? If you say yes to this, you belong to God. If you said no, I urge you to watch this again. <laughs> I love you, brothers and sisters. I know God is real. I know he loves you. And I know working on being an arrows out person with the love of God in your heart is the most important thing that you can manifest in your own life. And I pray that for you, that you might find joy and be able to find joy for others and share it with them. That is the way to be a truly noble and great person and to be the best kind of disciple for the Lord. I pray that you will find happiness. I pray that you will be at peace in your heart. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.